And good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday, the 14th of July to everybody. And welcome to the Flipside of Leadership live streamcast. As always, the second week we get our special guests at the Lions Den, the founder, the man, the myth, the legend. Dale Walls, there he is. How you doing, my friend? Good, man. How you doing? Very, very, very well. Doing good. Got a little weekend coming up here that I'm planning for, so it's good. But I wanted to make sure that we get this involved this special as i as i would say edition of the uh the lion's den as i get to go after you with some things so i, I always love this week because i get to what's well, funny to like, go when, after when each you other. were first pitching this whole thing like this is what you were after which was like you know what every week we need to get on and, and we need to duke it out on leadership topics Conflict. and you know make the fur fly <laughs> that's right that's right it's, it's exactly what it was but good, i think man. it's good i think it's it's good to hear opposing views and i think the, one of the themes that I want people to always remember, whether you're going to watch this live or whether you're going to watch it uh, later on, is that the Lions Den really is about uh, a fundamental belief that Dale and I have that we take heart at Lions Guide for doing, uh, which is that conflict and being able to have an opposing view about something uh, is part of leadership. And you should not surround yourself. If you are surrounded yourself with people who are telling you yes all the time, uh you're wrong and something's wrong in your leadership process because that's not that's not what it should be it should be that you get opposing views that you are allowing people to hear their voices about something about their belief on something and if it's different as a leader you probably need to take that into account and so the lion's den is is suited for that right we think different things sometimes about stuff we hear each other's views on it and and then you move and honestly every single time i talk well, to I, my friend we, we we learn something yeah, yeah and i think like the important part about it that is in fact i got another resource i want to talk to you offline that sure. that is in this area that i want to get you to get on to flip flip side um but look there's different leadership styles and i want to level up the word you're using in view and and say it's about perspective right there is perspectives we're all looking at the same things and there's just different perspectives so and and the reason i like kind of like like with the view the word view is because today like that that term has been used in all this ideology and tribal crap that's sure. that's, that's thing so so when it comes to leadership and even in your team or whatever i think it's just important to know that you should seek clarity of other people's perspectives like how are you seeing this right, right. um it's not necessarily a position right how what's your position you're taking on this and, th and there's a little bit of that but but it's more not necessarily what their position is but why you know what are they seeing like what's the perspective that you know, because that's where I'm at with this is like, I don't, I, it, you know, I talk about this all the time. This, there's a reason this isn't dalewalls.com and the Dale Wall show and whatever is because I know what I know and I know what I've seen and I know what I've experienced and learned. And I know that is minuscule compared to all the other pe perspective knowledge and whatever. So, and that's what I love about this, especially with you like chopping it up because you're obviously well experienced and educated and trained in leadership. But you'll you'll have different perspectives than I do, you know, just Absolutely. from those things, you know, and yeah. that's that's the point is like, um, you know, even for you guys out there that are leading teams, like how important it is to go. This is how, you know, this is what I'm thinking. How do you see it? Right. Like, what what am I missing? Like, those are just really powerful, engaging empowerment conversations to have with your team. And I'm, I'm not saying to give them the vote or to say inquire like you know, have curiosity about how they see it and, you know, what their yeah. thoughts and take it, you know? So anyways. Yeah. I, I, I was, I wake up, I've been waking up earlier and earlier, oddly enough, uh, for good reasons. So try to add some clarity and some, and some, uh, to my day and, and trying to find some time for myself before the ruckus starts. And, you know, this morning I was thinking about like, what, what is the, you know, we always say the leadership toolbox, right? But, and I always try to come up with something and I, and I had done my honesty, consistency, transparency kind of made, you know, I, I kind of formed that over time. And I started another one today about crayons and how, you know, we all start off with, you know, our Roy G. Biv colors and they're big, right? And we, we don't hold them correctly and we color outside the lines. And, and that's a lot like your leadership starts, right? They're, it's very simplistic. 
right? And and even even so, you you may even start before that with a black crayon and a white crayon and just figure that out of saying it's got to be like this. And I think what you're trying to get to is you're trying to get to the box of 64 that they're very honed, very, you know, they're smaller, they're detailed crayons that you want to be able to do with its own. And this, I think, is important with this, with its own sharpener on the box, right? You want your own sharpener to be able to take a very different shade of something and change that color because it's like everything else. And I think that's what intrigues. I know it intrigues me. I'm pretty sure it intrigues you about leadership too, is, is that, man, for as many different people there are in the world, there's as many different leadership styles as you can have. And when you put all them together, now you have to do something different. And so, so that's part way what the lion's den's all about. It's about being able to see a different perspective or the flip side of something, which is what we talk about. And and I think you and I would both agree one of the hardest things to see is yourself, right? You can see yeah. other people's, you can be empathetic to, to their needs and, and what they've gone through. But, you know, some things you're just not going to experience. So you have to be able to, to look at that and, and kind of go through that. And so well, let's get into it. If you're ready to battle, let's do this. Uh, I will I will parlay, sir, to you first. So you please go first today. Uh, I'm ready for your actions. And just like everybody know, we have only talked about these probably, what, for five? Actually, today was about five minutes beforehand. So uh, not a lot of time. It's almost, like, it's almost like we're lining up in the field of a Civil War battle. And we don't know what's coming, but then... We we arrive at the field That's and right. then we see like oh crap man they brought they brought some they brought some firepower. What did he yeah. bring today? What did he bring? <laughs> and then then we then we get on here and figure it out. So uh, hey, How morning you? to you guys checking in uh, who are following the live stream. Good morning, morning, and glad to have you here. Um, so yeah, let, let, so starting starting at the top, you know, I just wanted to kind of pick your brain on you know an issue that we see, and it's all it's it's a difficult conversation kind of issue, right? Which is you know, how does a leader help a failing peer, client, or even a subordinate who is uh, who is a va otherwise valuable contributor, right? I'm not talking about a bad hire or anything like that. I'm talking about you got a valuable contributor to the mission who's now falling behind or starting to lose their way. And, and, I, and I, I carve that up a little bit because like, from a leadership role, if it's a peer, you know, it's just someone that's a fellow leader like you. Maybe it's you're, you're a business owner and you got a friend that's also a business owner. That's a peer. Um, it might be a client that there's a dichotomy of a relationship there that, you know, because oftentimes I know in the service industry where I come from, we, we have a dependency on clients to do their part to properly feed the systems and things like that, right? Um, you know, and as well as obviously subordinates who we have a direct you know, a uh, leadership role with. Uh, so I was just kind of throwing that out there. You know, so we see one of these, these uh, personas uh, falling behind or losing their way. Like what's some, what's some ways to kind of start approaching that, dealing with it? What do you, what's your thoughts there? It's simple to me. It's two steps, right? So you have to, in the very beginning, in my eyes, um, you have to identify what the problem is, right? And you need to identify that of what what it is what is the problem whether it's a deficiency at work and it's professionally related whether things have changed and that person hasn't adapted or didn't give inputs to it right you have to look at the problem as a whole from that side first and identify what it is right now, you're I, saying what is the problem are we talking about seeking to understand what their problem is or the impact so, so it's both. It's identifying the personal. So I'm, I'm talking professional first, right? Identify what's the real problem. What's the impact about it? Make sure that when you go to bat, you have all your ducks in a row, right? Because these could be really difficult conversations to have. And, and this isn't about, you know, background checking. You know, it's not, it, this isn't deep. If you've got, or again, we're talking about good employees that are whatever, Here's the, the other side. And militarily, we would call it intrusive leadership. We'd pull them in and go, what's going on, right? What, what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. It's that simple, right? Because we could. We could have impact on their personal lives somewhat if, if we needed to, right? And so, uh, but when you look at, <clears throat> so th that leads to the next part. If they're willing to open up and say, hey, look, I've got these things going on. I can't deal with them. I'm going through a divorce. My kids, whatever. I mean, people are human beings, and sometimes they, you get. Sometimes people are really good at compartmentalizing what they have going on. Some people are really good at handling fires, right? And some people 
are not. And some people, just because they haven't had the opportunity, uh, good or bad, to get those, to, to let those things happen to them, they haven't had that adversity to do. So you identifying those, and if you have a good trust factor, again, which again, we're talking about, in my eyes, a leadership and a team that trust each other, that they understand that it, it I hate, I, I don't like saying culture and family, but when you feel like you can trust everybody and you, that you could, they can trust you as a leader, right? It may be just that they don't want to show you that they're weak because of whatever, right? And that's, that's not good either, right? You want to be able to say, hey, if you got a problem, cut. Hey, let's bring it. Let's work it out. That's a whatever tough that one. Is. We got to come back to that. Yeah, I totally get it. But because there's a lot of perceptions either way about what that means to be able to identify a problem. But I think it's it's vitally important. I would tell you right now, in my eyes, if an employee or even me, if I tell you, hey, I've got and I've done this for you a hundred times. Right. I said, hey, I may not get to this because of X, Y and Z because of X, Y and Z. Right. And I'll tell that up front and say, this is what we're what we're doing. Right. What we're what we're able to do for that kind of piece of it all. So I say that because when we're identifying that problem and you have the culture that you have that acceptance and everything else that's true, then the next step is is to as the leader is just set the plan and the expectation. Right. And look, your expectation may be you're a great employee. Take the time. We, we're going to share the workload, right? And, and, or with, you know, we're going to divvy it out with other team members because our culture allows that to us. And we're going to pick you up. And then when you're, when you're good to go again, bam, we've got your back and, and we're going to do that, right? So your expectation for them doesn't need to stay the same. It could be less if you need it to be, right? Because you know, if they've been a good employee, again, we're going with the premises is a great employee. It doesn't happen all the time, right? This is something. Then you, you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make exceptions for those employees because you want them to be there, and I think your culture also need to ex needs to accept the the uh, exception, right? If you and I know that sounds kind of weird, but everybody else needs to go. Absolutely, right? Like great worker, you know, got it. We're good. We're good to go with that. So I think it, but set the plan. That's the other part, right? Whether that's hey, giving this person time to work it out on their own. Hey, you got this? No problem. You know, we're our own people. You know, we get it how people kind of feel sometimes. If you, you need some time to work it out on your own and you think you can compartmentalize it, great. That's a way, that's a great way too to allow someone to do stuff. But be prepared. This is the key. Be prepared for your follow-up of a designated time frame. Let's say it's just 30 days just to make believe for this scenario. Hey, 30 days, I'll come back. Let's have another meeting and see if everything's okay. It's good to go. If you got it worked out, good. Then you should be back to being the form yeah. you're at. If you're not, talk to us. If we need to change loads or whatever, because people don't, people are scared, right? Well, are you going to reduce my salary? Are you going to take my job and give it to someone else? All those things and fears the more you talk about them and the more you get them off the table and say, that's not our intention at all. Our intention is to hundred percent to keep you and look, everybody else can, but that's a cult. That's when I do that with one person, I'm doing it with all the people, right? So when I talk to that one person, everybody else knows he would do the same thing for me, or they would do the same thing for me if we were in that position. And I think that's what brings comfort to your group and allows them to say, I feel I feel good then that that if I ever had a problem, I'm not. Am I still going to work to my things? Yeah. Am I still going to meet my goals? Yeah. Am I still going to meet the team's goals? Yep. It's it's not a it's not a and your culture will also dictate to say nobody will walk in and go, well, that person's getting it. Why can't I? That's you don't have that like that culture shouldn't exist if you have that transparency and and consistency about how you how you operate in, in places like that. So that's to me is the simplest way to do it. Two things: identify it. Set the plan, set the expectations. And a few things that I heard in there. Um, I like the intrusive leadership thing. We'll have to find some day to kind of talk about that. But um, what you, you, <laughs> you basically said lead, you know, but two major elements of being a leader is establishing the vision and establishing the plan, right? Sure. So you said, hey, there's an issue to solve for. Um, and to solve for it starts with establishing a vision, you know, as far as like once you seek to understand, right? It, so clearly, clearly identifying what the issue is 
then establish a vision and a, you know, I wrote milestones even like you, you said the 30 day mark, like maybe there's not clarity that this goes away. Maybe it's just the beginning of maybe problems at home, like you say, and sometimes yeah. they start and they last two years. Um, yeah, so, so they might be over in 30 days, who knows, but, but you, um, identified the issue. Hey, what do you think we could do about it? What could we do? Here's the impact and that's share and load or whatever. And then you establish a milestone of, Hey, well, let's, here's our new game plan. Here's how we're adjusting. And we're going to, you know, have a rally point in 30 days to talk about where this is at and do the same thing. See clarity again on the status yeah. of the issue, establish a new vision and blah, 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 blah. Cause so, yeah. here's the key really. And, and so I want to add one that I, I didn't call out as a, as a step, but I want to, I want to say it's probably a three step. So it's identifying the problem, whether it's professional or it's personal set a plan and expectations. And my last one would be follow up. What, what I, what I even, even to bring them in and say, Hey, how'd that issue all good? Is everything, everything going okay? <clears throat> That'll mean probably more to your people that you followed up and you cared about it than, than anything else. Yeah. And I don't care how you do it. A running word. I had a good friend who used to have a running word document and he would put a line underneath each issue. And if it was resolved, he would highlight it and, you know, he would highlight it in a different color. So it was resolved and he didn't knew not to go back to it. And anytime he went back to his list I mean, he ended up with like 27 pages by the time he was done, we were working in a schoolhouse with a bunch of, you know, with a bunch of students that had, you know, they had just normal stuff like, Hey, my yeah. credit card was stolen. Got it. He just, you know, is it fixed? Yeah. And he would go back and say, pull that person back in. Hey, did you ever get the credit card fixed? Yep. Absolutely. Right. I mean, just that's oh, the yeah. easiest way you can do it as a leader. And, and I loved Andy for that. He was, he was just, I had to take over for him and I was not that uh, <laughs> prepared as he was. He was senior to me by a while and he was just, he was, I mean, we made a joke. Anybody who, me and another guy made a joke. We said, anybody that takes over for Andy is going to look like, he's going to look like a dirt, dirt bag, right? And <laughs> I, I was not in line, nor was it, was it probably, it was not, the, the history was not that my, my current position was ever going to get this position. And I did. And then I was like, oh, shit. And I learned a lot about it. It was a, it was a great struggling learning year I led, but it was, it was good. But I think if you just do those three things, you can, you can so run them back again because the so, I'm going to write them down for. Yeah. So one is identify the problem, yep. right? Whether that's personally or professionally for that person, right. And how it's impacting the company, right. Or the, the workplace. Two is to set your plan and your expectations for them and talk to them about it, right? Make sure that they everybody understands it, right? Based off of everything that you've taken in, yep. right? And then lastly is follow up. Make sure you follow up, even if it's just a simple follow up. It doesn't need to be a detailed one. Follow it up, right? And then if it happens again, then you reset the process and, and figure it all out. So yeah, make cool. sense? Yeah, right. it's a good one. So here's one for you. Okay. Um. How do you keep the door open? And this is, you know, because this is a thing that I used to get, which was you hear about an issue, uh, you know, there's been some fallout from an issue and you go, why didn't you, why didn't you bring this to me or whatever? And it's, uh, you're, you were too busy. You were, you're, you're always busy, right? Like how, how does a leader <clears throat> keep the door open? What's some, what's some like, how do you keep an open door policy and it'd be a true open door policy? <laughs> because the intent is that it's used, right? right. If, if I open my door and I, I say, Hey, the door's open, come to me anytime. Come to like the door can be open all day. What's missing in the effect where they're still not coming through. And I know one of it, it you know, I saw it come through on the, on the chat here. It's like, you know, they got to feel comfortable and they, and, and the leaders got to show empathy and all those things. But what are, what are your thoughts on how to make sure that, you know, that door is open and it's a, it's a resource, it's an asset for them. There's, there's intentions there to, you know, pluck the weeds before they overtake the garden, so to speak. Right. Like what, how do you, how do you. Open door policy is a verb. It's not a noun. Right. And so, mm -hmm. and so I'll, I'll give you a really great saying, which someone told me a long time ago, and I think it's absolutely applicable to anything. Uh, it's when the soles of your shoes wear out before the seat of your pants. And so to me, you have to be active in, in seeking people and being where they are on the ground 
at their levels, right? Whether you're in a manufacturing plant and you're sitting up in your glass office and you're wearing your tie or whatever, get on the floor, put your hard hat on, get down there, right? If it's your, if you're in the military, it's that you're not stuck in your office all day doing stuff, it's that you're taking the extra time to do things. It's that you're going and seeing your people and, and engaging with them. I've, I've found some of the most most difficult challenges I ever faced because I was engaged on the ground, uh, on the ground floor, on the deck plates, as we used to say, than I ever did sitting in my office when people came to me with problems, right? Mm -hmm. I was, it was, what's going on? Hey, and you could just tell people want you, listen, I truly believe when you look at it, people want leaders that will be engaging and will be helpful, right? If you're in that position, the expectation is you are there to lead, right? Take the president. I expect a president to lead. I expect a president to act a certain way. That's what I expect him to do. Do I expect him to be walking into Secretary of State's office? Or No, that t- completely different. Because we're talking about small business. We're talking about you know manageable pieces, right? Do I expect, though, a leader of, a, of a, maybe a... Um, a big company in America to make their rounds across their potential stores or districts? Absolutely. 1000%. I would expect a district manager to be in their stores, right? At least whatever that would pick your, pick your, whatever it is and be open. That's the other thing, right? It's the culture that you, that you exist. If you know that that's happening, you know that they care. And then the reciprocation is, is that they can go, well, he comes to see me. I'm going to come and see him when I have my problem. So it's not just saying I have an open door policy. It's not saying that I'm just sitting there and typing out an email saying, if anybody needs me, I'm in my office, right? Dude, there's absolutely going to be, I used to have to, this was good. I used to tell, we used to have an admin uh, officer to a civilian. And I said, Hey, I'm going to need time with my door closed. And that was my time. If I had like administrate administrative stuff I needed to work on, my door was closed and I needed to work on that. But yeah. if I didn't, it was an open door policy. And if I wasn't, we moved. One of the big things we had when I was at the, my squadron was <clears throat> we moved the admin, admin group from, it's kind of weird how it worked. We had the executive officer and myself in one building with everybody. And then we had the CO, the XO, or the CO, and then everybody else of the officers kind of were all in another building. We ended up moving once we had some people back into that building. And one of our biggest concerns were we weren't going to be near the near the sailors anymore, right? Because we weren't going to be on the ground level. And it was tough, but we had to walk across to a different building and go and, and be able to do that uh, to get it like that. And so it, it was it was tough sometimes to be able to do to do, but you had to be able to do that. Yeah. No, I love it. And I think that's a great call out. Even, you know, a reflection lesson learned for me, right? Which was, you know, saying it's not enough, right? Like putting the sign up open door policy is not enough. Um, Certainly, you know, I wasn't solely locked down at my desk, but, you know, something else that we might cover in a bit. But it goes back to the importance of having the capacity to execute on an open door policy, as you put it, right? The open door policy being a verb, not a noun, yep. um, meaning that you need to get out there and, you know, get out there and make that happen. Not, not, and, and it, it also speaks to being proactive versus reactive, right? Don't just say the door is open and then have to react to everything that comes in right. it. If you're out there proactively walking the floor, inquiring uh, intentionally, not just saying, not just walking the floor and say, yeah, I walk the floor every day. No, but like, you know, to evaluate and things like that. Um, and, it's, it's getting it, out. And, you, you know, look, I think big companies sometimes use, well, let's let's get the photo off of the, of the CEO talking to someone on the ground floor, right? It's, it's more than that, right? If you oh, do yeah. that, if that's a regular thing. Now, granted, I get it. If you can't, you know, the CEO of Chevy can't go to every single dealership in America. I understand that. I totally get that that we get to a point where you can't be. But they can make an impact to people to make sure that their their impact is is that that's the expectation of their next regional managers. And and those regional managers makes the expectation to the store managers to be able to do it. Whatever you're doing, right? It's it's that it you can do what your what your level allows you to do to have that open door policy. And the other thing to all of this too 
is you need, we used to do this all the time. I know I felt very nervous when people came and I, we even had, we even were told, and I'm sure you were too, when you were a young Marine, oh, well, we're getting the general here today. Nobody asks dumb questions, right? Or whatever. And, and so what you've just done is you've just, his open door policy was just killed by a sergeant who just said that because now nobody wants to look like an idiot. And guess what? You might have an absolutely valid, you know, thing like so Mattis I'll bring I'll bring Mattis up and Mattis had skip echelon leadership which I'm a huge fan of which was you know he learned it from the British field marshal and it was look I don't there's a bunch of people I don't need I need to hear from the person on the ground in the tank what's going on period and they were like well wait a minute you need to it needs to go through the captain and then the major and then the no it doesn't I need to hear from that person as to what he sees and what she sees on the ground because that's what's happening I think you get it entirely. Powell was great at it too. That's why they're two of my favorite. Great at going and talking to people and hearing about that stuff. Because so, by the way, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, no, because, because all those links in the chain of communication are all filters of some. It's exactly sort. what it is. Yeah. Right? I don't want to look bad if you say something and whatever. And look, <clears throat> a good leader also knows when to how to filter on their own, a complaint versus a bitch versus a problem, right? And that's fine. People get to bitch. People get to complain. That It's fine. It's not a huge deal. It, it's when you have a true problem and then you go, hey, and when you, when, you can, when you can take it and go, we've had these from the sailors. Is there something wrong that I don't know? Because this is the thing. And you're talk, you, you wanted to bring it back up. It's a great time. You're going to have issues that people, we, we used to talk about all the time, fix the problem at the lowest level. There are things that are going to raise to the high levels that need to be raised to the high levels because it's that way. I mean, it's just, it, it was, it was that enough that we did, but we also praise people for fixing a problem and changing something and finding the solution because it's going to end up saving the company money or because it's going to not give us a black eye. So you cannot be the type of leader that, right? So it's an, so I use this all the time. It's one of my, it's one of the core principles for my L4 series is underreacting, right? And when you hear those problems, you hear those issues, you got to underreact to them. Yeah. Take them seriously and underreact. Because if you don't, again, it goes back to what we just talked about. If you don't follow up, hey, bud, right? Maybe it's an email. Maybe you've gone back to the headquarters. You know, you remember that Joe Schmeigel you know, told you about a problem, you talk to the supervisor, whatever, and then you give them something that really means something to them saying, hey, I fixed it. And that's not hard to do. Or, hey, I talked to your supervisor directly, blah, 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 blah. We're going to fix that problem. And no repercussions anywhere, right? We just fixed a problem for the company. We made the company better. That to me is, act, that's an active open door policy that that works, right? And, and I think that's, I think that's, that's the only way to have it, period. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so you've kind of touched on a few of mine, but let me give you a couple. So I'm going, so for all our viewers, if you didn't know, every day, Dale does his daily, his daily downloads, his daily affirmations that he has. And he, he finds, and he has a, has a growing list of uh, great quotes, sayings, uh, mementos that he's kind of taken in. And, and if you aren't linked to him, he puts one up every single day. Um, as we've talked about conflicts, sometimes we want to make sure, uh, that he's uh, in the right mindset here, because sometimes I, I don't know, I don't always repost it because I don't always agree with them. So we're going to, we're going to throw a couple at him that, um, may need some clarification, I think, because I don't fully agree. So I'm going to do two in one here, two in one, because it's a good topic. So you posted, and this has been in the past, probably a couple three weeks at least, uh, so I'm going to read the two of them and then we'll, we'll talk about them. You said, make yourself a priority once in a while. That's the part I have a problem with, uh, because it's not selfish. It's necessary. I agree. I don't agree with once in a while. So we'll come back to it Two, Never get so busy while making a living that you forget to make a life. So I put those two together because I think they, they obviously go hand in hand with each other. Um, so let's talk about the first one first, which is once in a while, uh, make yourself a priority. But explain that one to me, why it was only once in a while, because I don't agree it's only once in a while. Well, do you say that Do you say that statement or something <clears throat> similar without that? Do you Absolutely. say make yourself the priority? Period. Think so? Yes, I do. I do. And here's my reasoning for it. Um, 
So the priority is you're always if if, if I'm you cannot function at well, a time high out, level. Time out, time out, time out, time out. All right. Did you want my perspective on it, or you All just right, wanted to get geared up? Well, you to asked give me, me a question. <laughs> you asked me a question. I just yeah. Why yes, is no. it, why is it yes, only no. once in a while? Well, listen, um, it's not about mints and words, but um, <laughs> which 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 is a little bit of mints and words here. I'm totally trying to. Um, we so said read it to me again. Make yourself a priority. Make yourself a priority once in a while. It's not selfish. It's necessary. It's it's a make yourself a priority once in a while, right? Because here's here's what I'm speaking to. People, I, I've talked to many clients, and I've got many friends that own businesses that make this happen. They put the business ahead of everything, everything. But there's going to be times, and and this go back that people who have been following, and listening, have heard me say before, which is it's not about work life balance; it's about work life harmony. And sometimes there's things that are going to be priority, you know, so work is going to be at times a priority over self, you know, Marine Corps primary leadership objective, mission accomplishment, secondary leadership objective, troop welfare, right? Um, the current mission at hand is the priority. And there may well be times where you are the priority, like resolving an issue you're having, some personal issue, whatever. And there's times where whatever issues you may have going on personally may pale in the requirement to solve for at the office or in your team or whatever. So, you know, it's not necessarily about, you know, a once in a while thing. Um, that's not the emphasis of, of the, 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 the point I'm trying to make there, which is it pick your head up and take care of yourself. It, like, you know, the whole lines guy brand is founded off holistically making sure you take care of yourself as a high performer. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice your workout one morning because all hell's breaking loose on a project that's unexpected or the deliverable just demands it. And those are the days where you're going to say, Hey man, I've been running five out of seven days a week. I can miss tomorrow because this is the priority. And there's going to be times where, you personally are suffering because you've been given seven days a week to the office and not taking care of yourself, which now has made yourself brighter. So the, the once in a while thing, don't get, don't get tripped up. It's a, it's about a harmony, you know, at sometimes you're going to need to make yourself a priority. Um, however, to give you what you're trying to angle towards is my recommendation would be you are a system as well. Just like your business is a system and you've got standard operations, like you need to have your standard operations for yourself so that there is ongoing maintenance, so to speak, to take care of yourself to your point, which I think you're going to say is you need to be a priority all the time. Yes, you are the root operating system. You can't not take care of yourself and have the other things ride your shoulders and be successful. You do need to make yourself a priority all the time. All the time. I'm with you. I know. But. You. I know you've you got to, uh, so it's a reminder to those who are just heads down on work and right. It's the thing I say, right. Don't be surprised when your spouse is leaving you, when you're working 80 hours a week and not giving any attention to the family. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you looked at the most successful people, they'll, you'd see that they're working their, they, they have worked their asses off their entire life at the sacrifice. They also have, they're also been divorced a few times. They've been right. Like if you look at the best, like and this is and odd too. That's just poor prioritization. There's like, you know, because we talk now. So think know. about this though. Take it in sports. I used to have the conflict all the time. Who's better, LeBron James or Michael Jordan, right? And obviously I grew up in the Jordan era. So Jordan's right. You look at James and you look at though, and, and I've been more I've been more interested in about it lately because I've been looking at leadership in sports. And you look at how, like, if you read read Relentless, it talks about the book, you talk about how people so if you take a Michael Jordan, if you take a Kobe Bryant, if you take in my eyes a Tiger Woods, in my, uh, Michael Schumacher, I just watched his documentary yesterday. It was one release, which is if people don't know about Michael Schumacher, you probably heard about him back in the day for Formula One. But if you really look at it, all those people were so dedicated. And besides Schumacher, everybody else had a hiccup, right? And I looked at when I took this leadership course before, 
Um, we were talking about maverick leaders. Some of our best military leaders that we've ever had, they weren't these perfect like examples of of other things, right? They they had like Mattis made a couple bumbles where it would be, you know, he you know, because he used to talk, he used to talk crap that he shouldn't have, and he said some stuff that he shouldn't have, right? You looked at MacArthur and what excuse me, what MacArthur did. You looked at Patton and how Patton was, but they were they were these literally probably greatest leaders we've ever had in our military, hands down, without there, there's no 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 expectation for that. But you look at these superstars. And you say to them, and when they're really at the top echelon, right? And going, dude, that is the best person you could you've that have ever played the game. Even Brady and his just how he's been. I didn't want to leave him out because we we did him. You saw these like internal conflicts, you saw these pieces of the puzzle. And let's take man in the arena. And, and I know we want to go back to it. Brady said the best time he ever had in his life was when he took off for four weeks, when he was suspended for what had happened. Gronk, Gronk said the same thing when he yeah, got suspended. It was the greatest thing he's ever done was in his whole 22 year career. And I think that goes back to this whole, what's the priority? There's a definite sacrifice to be that. At Priorities that level, are going to ebb and flow though. Absolutely. Which, so this leads to your second one. And I think, I think. Oh, hold on. Are we done with this one? Well, yes, I, I agree with you. You could take out the thing once in a while and you can mean personally, because here's the other part. No, you're right. It's, we're not done. Here's the reason why. I'm under the Scott Kelly twin in space for a year type thing. Read his book Endurance and he was like, look, 80% is going to get you what you need all the time. 20% is going to be in reserve. I think what you're alluding to and what your harmony is is saying, look, you're going to give perceived and edgy hundred percent people are going to go dude that dude's given it all but the truth of the matter is internally the potential is is that great i have some reserve time because when those batteries get low and you don't get a morning workout or when your change your routine changes then you dip into your 20 percent that you've been working on because you did keep yourself call it mindfulness call it whatever you want to call it, physical all the things that you need to work on that I think is where you dip into the 20% and say, okay, I need to, I need to dip into the batteries here because we've got X, Y, and Z, but all the time I'm using, I'm, I'm a priority to make sure because I've seen the watering can and I think you have too, where there's a hose in a watering can, right. And the watering can is then, you know, is, is watering all these flowers. I think that's the way it is. If that watering, you're the as a leader, you're the watering can, right? And if it, if you don't fill it with what you need to, you cannot give it to other people. It just does yeah. not work. You that can't way. you can't pour from an empty cup. Correct. Yeah, we've heard that same um, thing, right? So I, I yeah. So like I said, I, this that was really a message to those who are left themselves behind, um, and because I I Lord, man, I see that far too often. And in that same yeah. time, I'll give credit to a client who I've been working with over the last uh, few months, who you you would think was of the mindset that, well, something's got to give and, and I can't work on me and work on the family and meet the demands of the business. And I tell you by the fourth, fifth week, completely different individual with relations too, because all that comes down to leading. It comes right. down to properly prioritizing and um, attending to all things, right? You just can't ignore key pillars of your life, you know, yourself no. included. Be they because here's the, ignored. We, I, I have a client as well who <clears throat> would, dude, would do anything for anyone in the company to the detriment of, of, of themselves. And that's what, like, you can't, you have to be, you know, <coughs> excuse me, you have to get to a point where like, okay, where's your, where's your, where's your line that you're going to be able to do? Because if you got to remember, it's not just one, it's, you got everybody else to be able to do something with. And if you're not there, you know, I mean, they were adamant. I had a, had a 3 a.m. conversation one time, you know, up, up late and I'll, I'll bleed for it. Okay, dude, hold on. You need to be the best you can be in order to give the best for everybody else. That's the okay. only way it works. And you can drain the batteries and you can compensate a little bit, 
but at some point you got to pick it back up because what ends up happening is, is all those extra things, whether it's spiritual, whether it's educational, financial, hey, real quick, you said, uh, sometime you got to pick it back up. Does that mean like every once in a while? Recharge your battery. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but that's, but it's not for you. You're, you're still gonna, a priority. I, I was, yeah, I, was I know what you're doing. I see. <laughs> you, oh, so let me ask this. Every once in a while, you guys. Tomorrow, listen, could you post this tomorrow? Make hey. yourself make yourself a priority. It's not selfish. It's necessity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just take the once in a while. Out. Yeah, and I just, again, equate it to, We're like, all, I, I, I like to personally and, and also recommend to people struggling in this area, just systemize it, right? Like, yeah. systemize your 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 recharge, your, your person, like for me, my day is kind of broken up. At least my 4am to 4pm is really broken up into three areas. Four to 8am is personal development time. 8am is business development time. Um, 1pm in the afternoon is all client development time. And, and, you know, that's it. So I've yeah, systemized yeah. it so right. that I, I can make sure those things are attended to. They're not ignored. Go ahead, Jude. But not everybody is. It, it. Okay, so I have the luxury for everybody in here who know, knows Dale and how Dale, he does sound like that. But here's what I'll give you. We, we had a meeting one time and it was like down to the T and we changed a bunch of things. And what I didn't see from you which I thought was interesting, even though I thought you were going to be very systematic and very like, we need to keep to this, is that you were flowing, right? Like there yeah. could be changes there. You knew we were going to have overages, right? And it was it was going to be like that. And I think that's important, right? I yeah. don't want to, I don't want you to come it, across it's not like everybody. It no, is. yeah, it's, it's harmony, right? Like yeah, I absolutely. have a structure. Yeah. And it's my and and, I, and better yet, another eighty percent of the word, time you, it, you it, there has to be intention, right? right? Like people yeah. show up and just wild ass guests their day, right? What's, right? What do you got going on today? I don't know. <laughs> like just the inefficiency of that. Are you going to get through the day? Heck yeah, man. You're going to get through it. Right. Are you going to be as effective as possible sure. and as impactful as possible? No, you have to approach everything with intention, in my opinion. And I have my... I have a structure. Not, not everything. I want to. I want to take the thinking out of it. The stuff I want attended to. I don't want to have to think of when I'm like because when we have to stop and think and plan all the time, it's really high demand on us. It takes time. Sure. But if it's planned out, mapped out, like my favorite part about any project I'll say or initiative is executing. So I want to get that hard work, like the game plan, the vision, the milestones. I want to get all that done up front, so we just execute. So what Go. if you don't make it? What if I don't make what? What if, you, what if you don't make your plan? What if I don't? What, I mean, what's the big deal? Well, I'm asking you. Yeah. I, I mean, if because my guess is once in a while, you don't make it. <laughs> if, it's, if something happens, something happens. But I also, you know, bake in buffer time throughout my day, sure. you know, that, yeah. that I can, that I can ebb and flow as needed and all yeah. that stuff. And again, am I saying I'm, I'm better or that's the best way or, oh, or no. people have to do that? No, I'm saying I have a system, sure. you know, that I can adjust. You got to have a system. Yeah. I think that like, if you haven't read it for all our viewers, the checklist manifesto is a great book that will tell you that, you know, it proves to you uh, that the more difficult technical, whatever you want to call it, your days are and what you do, the more you need checklists to be able to do stuff. Right. Because yeah. it's, it just, it, you can't capacity wise, you just, it, you can't keep all that knowledge in, in your head. And two, it just organizes it all and just simplifies it. Right. I do it every day on my whiteboards and, and keep it there. And I try to make my stuff every week. But you know what? This kind of leads into the other one, which was, you know, never gets, Yoda says about try, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. I think this is also the look, you're not always going to make something and it's not always and you may push things back. I think this is a very this is interesting to me because we were I was talking to uh, Jordan, who we had on before, and um, she was she was talking to me about uh, a person that she knew that, you know, they were younger and didn't know Jordan's exact words where she didn't know how good she had it. And I, we, we discussed it and we, we basically said, you know, when you're young, you don't, 
you know, you could get worked to death and you don't, you, you think that's well, no. part of the process. Yeah. Right. And you think that that's part of it. And, and I believe there's a lot of stuff that you and I talked about leaders to that. If I was talking to a young leader, it would be very different than if I was talking to an older leader, right. Of, of a, like, let's say, and I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number. This is not, let's say 40 and up and 40 and below. And that's not really where it is, but let's just, you're, you're at a different point in your life about a lot of things. And maybe you've reset, maybe you've had to go back, but there's a different perspective you have at those things. And this isn't better, worse. And this isn't told you so been there, done that. This is none of this. This is just, you know, you, you can't, it's, it's really tough for, for a younger person to understand. I said, she, she won't know that until later on. That's how good she had it because she, that's, it's not good for her because they need that whole, right. That, that what the grind, right. The grind is real. That, that does a lot of things for you. It hones you as a person, it, it, right. Whether good or bad experiences that you have, you know, that leads to another one that you said, which we can get to, but it was, it, it's just, it's a different part of you that living is working when you're young and you don't get to the point where you want to separate it or you need to separate it until later because it's all right. It's all jumbled there when you're young and you're like, you know what? It's all together. It's okay. And even if you have checklists and everything else, it's still right. You take a doctor, right. And you talk to them about like their residencies and they're like, it's chaotic. I'm up till three in the morning and I get called like at five and then I'm up again for rounds. And it's just like, but, but bodies can handle that, right? Like their, their youth can handle that type of stuff. Whereas you and I are like, hold on, I need to get this all, you know, I need to get it all separated and I can look at it and go, okay, now I get to choose. And then that leads to look some things. And I'm sure you do this. You know what? I wanted to get to that to this week, but I, sorry, my, my son's blah, blah, blah came up and it's more important because I want to go to that because I'm never going to get that back this next thing I can do next week. And, and I think that's important. It's prior, prioritization, right? And this whole, yeah, and that, your whole and that's it. Is that. Prioritization. Yeah. And because, Absolutely. you know, I'll work with clients. And <clears throat> I love when this comes up, the opportunity to kind of, you know, talk about this lesson, which is that I got it. I got to work late. I got to work Saturday. I got it. You're like, time out for a minute. What would happen if you didn't? Right. What would happen if you didn't work late today? Well, I'd have to come in tomorrow morning and, and do it. Great. Anyone's going to die if that happens? Well, no. But, and, and that's where business owners especially feel obligated right. that because there is work to be done, they should be working. But it comes right back to proper prioritization. Just because there's work, that means there's work to be prioritized. It doesn't need to be a 24-7 operation necessarily. Um, if you feel the need to be a 24-7 operation or you're operating 24-7, that might be a, a symptom of the need to delegate this need to work on your systems, right? Like maybe sure. it is just chaos. And the reason it takes 12 hours a day to get stuff done is because it's just not organized. There's no structure. There's no policies. Right? There's no, no guidelines. Uh, yeah. There's no process. Um, or it may be, you know, that it's time to add some bodies or, or, you know, delegate more or whatever. Look at, look at various capacities within the team. Um, so, I know you want to get to delegate. I know that's one of your questions for me, but. Uh, yeah, no, we can roll with these because I think we've hit on what I wanted to go there. Two things that stick out in my mind when it comes to what you just mentioned is two lessons I learned. Uh, the first time you get leadership really in the Navy is probably when you make E4, which is a third class petty officer. It's probably would be a corporal for you guys, I think. And uh, I learned a lesson there. And then I learned another one. Um, when I went to command master chief school uh, and, and there, they couldn't have been further apart from my careers. One was at the tail end and one was at the very beginning. And I remember walking in and, and one of the petty officers said during our leadership piece, he, I think is a, she actually, she said, um, look, you're somebody's in the, we're again, the organization is enormous, right? You're talking about what, 320, 420,000 people in this organization. But think about this too for yourself. Someone's sick or someone's whatever, it, the, the show will go on, right? Like just because you're not here, it's okay. 
like and and they were talking about it for our people like let your person go home and and work you know it's not worth it we were talking about being sick and just letting someone go home and making that decision instinctively like they're sick let them go home the, the machine's gonna still work which is yeah. to your point it's gonna be there that's fine right and when someone else is gonna pick up that slack which is fine because it's gonna happen to you at some point and, and you'll you'll pick up for somebody else goes back to our culture talk the one i the one i learned as as a cmc was and we, you, you know you get to school and you're all like yeah i'm in cmc school right i'm ready to yeah i'm gonna be the best right just, you don't know shit by the way about it really but you just know it's my one for today Tony Adams, he was the head CMC at the at the schoolhouse. First thing he says to us, gruff guy, right? Just but but once you gruff interior, you would never walk up to him. You've always felt you could just look at him. He was super intimidating. He said, How many of you believe that you have to be the first car in the parking lot in the morning and the last one to leave? This way, when the sailors get there, they see that you're there then. And then when they leave, they see that you're still there. How many people believe that? And of course, we're all like, that's what we need to do. Yeah, that's us. Right? Yeah, we want to. And he was like, you're all wrong. And we were all like, oh, that, that backfired. And he was like, listen to me. He's like, you're going to need days off because over the weekend, you dealt with so much stuff that no one else did that you need to cut your grass. And he put it that simple. And he's like, so you're going to tell that you're going to call the skipper and say, skipper, I ain't coming in today. Uh, you know, I had a long weekend with the crew. I'm, come, you know, I'm staying at home, cutting my grass because I need that time off. And he said, and his other part was, is how many people want to be, because remember, it's an up and out organization, right? Up or out organization. He said, and how many people want to be you if they see you working from that time to that time? Like, yeah. that's not going to make them want to move up, not just to your position, but in any position, because they knew that that was going to happen. And that was really, it was like the first five minutes of class. And we were all like, Oh, because we all thought we were going to learn, like, tell us how to write evaluations. Tell us how to, you know, conduct. And it was the whole class was not about that. It was about, you know, making sure be prepared for you. Like you are going to change. When when Katie went, my wife, they were like, listen, your husband's going to be pulled in a thousand different directions when there's time off. You all need to have or or, or wife because it was, it was or spouse, I should say, because everybody was there. They were like, this is a completely different scenario than a nine to five job. Like leadership is not the nine to five clock in, clock out type of a thing. It's about being there and open and you're going to need to take that. And that goes to what you said. Don't forget about making a life. You're going to realize there's more important things. And I think when you, even when you, we, and you probably felt this too, even when you first had kids, you're kind of like, okay, I still got to work. I still, this is still important. And you missed a lot of stuff, right? I know I did. We had to do deployment, which is totally different, but you get it. And I'm like, but now it's very important for me. Like if I ever did an interview, you asked me what's the most important thing to me now. It's like, it's my family and, and the balance that I have or the harmony that I, that I have with, with what I'm yep. doing. Not, not about, you know, and I, I, I I'm never going to care as, and think about this too, right? Nobody's going to, when you had Corsica, nobody's going to care about Corsica more than you, period. It doesn't matter who they are. It's yours. You've owned it. You've built it. Nobody's going to care more than you. We all get it. But <laughs> you have other things that you need to do. And I think that that speaks to, to both and, of those. And I think that's, that you know, for you business owners out there, you know, this is called setting through the goal, right? You may have a goal of the business that we're going to make X amount of dollars and whatever. But setting through that goal is the why. Like you're going to acquire that 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 revenue or whatever. So that what? Like what does that mean? It goes to this like little. You've probably seen this online. You know, it's 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 this like little uh, parable about like this business guy's on vacation on a tropical island. He comes across a guy that fishes, and he brought the fish in. And the fish are delicious. And the business guy talks to him and goes, man, you, know, you could really build a great business out of this and we could scale it. And, and the guy was like, well, if we do that, he's like, you could buy another boat. And he's like, well, if you do that, what does that mean? He's like, well, you sell, you you produce twice the fish and whatever. And he said, well, if we do that, then what? He's like, well, then we go to the other island and we get another fleet. And now you've got all these fish coming in. And over 20 years, you'll be doing doing this, that other. And he's like, well, why would I do that? And he's like, because then you can just move to a tropical island and fish all day. And the, the, the moral of the story was right. the dude already had that, right? you know, and, yeah. and, and this business person was talking about how he could 
grow this business so that he could live on a tropical island and all he would have to do is fish all day. Yeah. That was exactly the guy he was talking to. Perfect. Um, so that's it, man. I think like business owners kind of get this, uh, this. When I had James Tyler, when I had James Tyler on, uh, as a guest, he, he said something that was super impactful to me. And it, it's, it's that without telling the great story. And it was <clears throat> some businesses just keep because of we're America, everything's bigger, badder, better. And we have to get to whatever we see Bezos and we see Musk and we see, look, you make a good business and you guys are making it and everybody's profitable and it's good. There, there is reason to stay, to stay where we're at. You could grow as a company and get all the things for your people at a certain size that you don't have to be huge. That's not like, like it's okay to be that because you, you, you talk about people like behemoths, like, you know, and like, Oh, we need to, what, there's reason I get it. There's reason, find your niche, find your niche, keep your niche and just stay at your niche. You're good to go at that point. James was really focused on that. I think this is, that's the moral of that fish story was look, I got what I want, you know, and, and, and I, it's, it's funny. You brought it up in the beginning where people come out of colleges or maybe you talked about before and they're like, well, where's my $80,000 job that's supposed to be that I get weekends and I could telework and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, hold on. Like, yeah. 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 And <laughs> like, this kind of applies there too. Right. So that what, like, where does, right. that's the basis <clears throat> of what goal on the other side of that. They yeah, don't I, really, in my opinion, they don't maybe really know sometimes, right? They just well, have this. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> there's a grind. I mean, there, there, there's a grind where now, listen, over the years, it's been, oh, this is the initiation to get in. And it's been, it's been, we've come a little ways from that where it's not so uh, symbolic that somebody has to be crapped on just to be part of something anymore, right? Like we can, there's ways to, to, to go around that. But <clears throat> the grind, there's a reason why you get the grind, right? And there's a way to grind now that's not that that gets the same result and gets people. One of the big things that we had in, in when we did our 45 day leadership, it was time management. Like you just don't time management and prioritization are two of the biggest things that we learn as chief petty officers about what to do and how to how to like just during those 45 days that you'll get meaningless tasks that are there just for you to go. That's not worth doing. I need to figure out what's more important to me. And we, my, my friend and I learned it on day one when they gave us a task that wasn't going to be done for another six months, seven months. And we were like, we got, we got this all in day one. And they, we stayed up all night trying to do it. And they were like, you guys are idiots. Why would you do that? It was like, Learn that lesson day one, right? And someone's like, Give, send me some stuff out in San Diego. And I was like, uh, go F yourself. I'm not, I'm, well, sure, I, I, I'll lose that one and I'm fine with that, right? So, but I think that's important, right? If we, if you teach prioritization and, and by the way, small business owners, teach that for your, the only way you can do that is by giving perspective, transparent perspective of what you go through and what's important to you and boiling that down for your, for your employees, right? If you think about it, like you have, they have to have that, or you need someone regardless to be able to translate what's important on upside isn't right. And, and the down, right? So what, whatever that is, I CMC's command master chief, I play actually play that role now in my business where I understand what's happening on ops. I understand what's happening. And, and then I also understand what my CEO is going through and what he needs. And, and there's a translation, right? Because I think you wanted to bring this up people tend to get timid about being able to bring their problems to, to things, right? You don't want to bring your problems or bring what you have to something. And I think that's, that's, you should be able to have an open environment to bring a problem. I always tell you, if you're going to bring a problem as, as an employee, if you're going to bring something up to someone, bring a solution, right? So bring what you've thought about how the fix is. Don't just bring problems to people, bring them both. I think if you do that, it's, it, it, it doesn't, you, your fear goes away. Right. As a manager or as a higher level person, if I get both, I'm, I know that you're not just coming at me with with issues that. Right. I want you to be able to try to fix them and have looked into them yourself. Like, I think that's the doer mentality 
you know, of looking. And then maybe, maybe you can't fix them. Maybe you need things to happen, but I think that's important. And I feel that sometimes um, <clears throat> misprioritizing issues in a way, when we, people just kind of throw an issue on a leader's plate without any kind of remedy or suggestion, or, hey, I, I noticed this was an issue and here's some ideas I thought about it. Um, I would say that, that that when those instances happen, you know, as a leader, they annoyed me because I've got a plate of issues to us resolve already. Um, and I would want to see some initiative taken that if you're going to dump an issue on my plate, dump it with a, Hey, and help me out. Right. Like help me help you. Right. Like, you yeah. know, don't just give me something else to solve for. If you've got ideas, Hey, dump the issue and dump your ideas at the same time. Cause I might be able to give you a, like, yep, I, I co-sign that go do it. Right. Like, but if you're just dumping it on your leader's plate for them to figure out, you know, figure it out for me type of stuff. And it, it just, to me as a leader, it was a frustrating when folks would do that, right? They're just, they're, I, I, you know, like I said, I got a pile of issues to solve for already. And here you come just dropping one and walking away, right? It's like, so I'm just dumping yeah, and, 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 and if they don't that though, right? Well, this goes back to what you talked about and what, what you asked me about in the very beginning, yeah. which was, hey, what do you do about a person that's having an issue and how do you fix it? Right. Well, if you haven't built that culture where they feel like, cause you're right. Some people are just like, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Yeah. Like, it's whatever, which, which is totally true. But what you just said, they don't know about any of your other issues sure. and they don't necessarily care about the other issues that you're facing. That's your job to deal with. Not theirs. Right. I say yeah. this all the time, understand that, on a base level, you hope that people have sympathy for everybody else, whatever that is, up the chain. But the truth is, they don't have to. That you don't hire them to worry about you and what you're dealing with. That's not why yeah. you hire them. Right, true. What you hope, though, is that if you set the expectation in the beginning, I think this boils this down to me. When you make a hire, you have a chance and an opportunity at that point in time to really set the bar as to what things are and how you want them to work. And if you tell them, look, if you got an issue, no problems. I'm here to help. How can I help you? That should be something as a leader we say all the time. How do I help you do your job better and get the job done, right? That's what I, I take away roadblocks for people, right? But if you also caveat that with, come with me with a little bit of like, even if you Google it, if it's not in your swim lane, give me a little bit about it. What it'll do is two things. One, it'll know, I know that you care about the problem as a leader. Two, it helps me a little bit go, okay, I know that they've looked at this, maybe not officially, because I still have to do my full thing, but there's a little bit there that I know of, and you can help me get a little bit from it. And two, you may be, three, you may be giving me a perspective that I don't have. We talked about that before. You may have given me a perspective of the problem that I don't even see. So your solution may be something I would never think about because I'm not in your shoes. Yeah. I think that just is, it's transparent. It's, it's just, it opens everything up. It builds that trust, loyalty, and respect between people. So I always, I've always look, just, just come with the solution and, and look, you may not have it. You may not have the, you may not have the capacity. I say this all the time too, right? So you may only have a six shooter. Your mag may only be, you may not have 15 in the mag. Right. But the next person up does. They've got some more bullets they can shoot from it, you know, to try to get something to happen. So, you know, just, hey, that happens. It's OK. It's not a problem. Right. I mean, that's what that's what you're there to do is you're there to help and remove roadblocks. So, yeah, good conversation. Yeah. yeah good. You got another one or we go we, yeah, good go, round pick on, go pick on my posts a little bit more. Oh, that's on. not true. That's not true. I knew there were going to be good conversations and I won't I won't hit on the other ones, but. I think we've hit about all yours, right? Uh, yeah, we'll hit on another quote. I mean, you want to do uh, one more? Sure. I'll give you a good one. Wrong people will always teach you the right lessons. I don't think that's true at all. Don't think so? No, I don't. Why not? I used to believe <clears throat> what they're showing you is how you don't want to be, right? Is I know I don't want to. Be, no, I don't think that's a lesson at all. I don't think, don't that's think so. A, no, Ooh, I don't. Man, it is. Oh, I don't. Because it focuses on the negative of the lesson, right? And you want to focus on positive lessons, right? In my in my view, right? This is just is not again, a positive I'm, lesson. I'm playing with word. I'm playing with words here, right? Yeah. But yeah, it's a man. It's not a positive but, lesson for you. It's a, it's it. No. I get turned off very much by like. Okay, I'll give you this. 
uh, politics who who display politicians politicians who display yeah. sorry I said politics politicians who display uh, unleadership things when they do stuff that's very unleader like is not a lesson for me I get very turned off buy it and you will lose me very simple I don't learn I don't learn not to do that because of because they did it that's not what I well, learned you you may already know that right like you already that's know true. that's not the right thing to do. so it's to me I would challenge you to say you're not learning anything because you already knew that lesson but it's affirming the lesson that you already knew mm, but that's not teaching me the right lesson then I know but if you saw some, but if you didn't already know it, and you saw someone go do it, whatever this bad thing would be, how would you? But how would you know then if it's right or wrong? How, what do you mean? Well, if you the saw, result. if you didn't know the lesson, and you yeah. watched something do something, how would you know whether it was right or wrong? The results. <laughs> it's very results can be very <laughs> results can, results can be very different. Correct, but they are. If you, if you watch the results, the, bad the results. Leader, like a bad leader will produce a certain set of results. No, that bad. Okay, so take it for okay. Let's do this and compartmentalize let's, that. Right, a bad leader could great make great financial results. He could make a terrible culture. He how could. Many, how many times did you see a leader at work? Let's not take politicians. Take that out of the equation. Good, okay, because they're not leaders. They're. I I understand. Well, there's just way too many. I don't, there's not even worth doing. Take someone who's at work, who's a bad leader, but they're getting amazing results. And that happens all the time, right? Because they're focused on the business. They're not focused on the people. And you're seeing them make a lot of money and you're seeing them get uh, promoted. And all you think to yourself is, dude, dude, look at that guy. Look at that girl. They're, they're assholes, but they're, they're getting results. That is a very skewed thing in, in a young person or a young leader's so, mind. So, well, let's not compartmentalize. Like when I use the term, again, I'm a holistic thinker. Results <laughs> to me is not just, it's it's multiple things, right? Sure. Like the fact that everyone around that person thinks they're an asshole is a result <laughs> of the things they're doing, right? right? Because that's their team. Right. Team is very important. And team doesn't mean the people working under you. It means the circle around you. It means the people above you, right? Up, up, down, and out, like you, you taught me. Um, yep. So if the things you're doing are a detriment to your team, that's a result. You might be getting promoted, but if you're chopping the legs out from everyone around you to get there, like that's gonna come, right? That that that's gonna you you could be watching that going, oh. Well, I'm not helping that guy because all he cares about himself and a promotion and and whatever. And but that's a result, right? That's that's why everything you do matters and and why that harmony is important because like you do need to think about more than just whatever's on at the tip of your nose, right? Like in, in the actions that you're taking and in the tactics that you're using. Um so to me, like result isn't just what's on the scoreboard, you know, um, you know, you see that in sports, right? You see a team won the game, but the dude, you know, acted like a complete idiot or, or, you know, it just would really turn you off or whatever, or a captain could ruin a leadership position or trust capital. They might've won the game and he might've pitched a hell of a game or hit a hell of a game or whatever, but he might've lost some trust capital for certain things. And you understand what I'm saying? So result, I when I say, when I, to clarify the, the point, when I say you observe the results. I'm talking about everything, man. Like not just, you know, but your perspective asking. isn't everything sometimes when it's on, I'll give you a great example of it. Right. So, uh, when I got to Japan, we had a leader that was old school, like real old school and would do anything for his shop, including beat him down. Right. Like that's just the way that they work, beat them down and, Right. And they'll, they'll get, get back up if they're tough enough in what they're doing. Right. Uh, this person got went around the system of promotion and literally got me promoted because he had access to our skipper and told him, hey, it'd be a great idea if we did a spot promotion early before you leave. 
because skippers can use their power. Back then, they could use their power to spot promote people. We were on C duty at the time. What's this junior and, enlisted? Like they guess. Yeah, I was a junior enlisted. enlisted. I was an E five at the time, and so this E eight was flew with the skipper because he was a crewman, and he got a he got a sailor of the year or sailor junior sailor of the year, whatever. And they did a spot promotion before our, before our commanding officer left. I got promoted. Cool, great. Later on, <clears throat> I told that story to another senior person, and he's like, "Look at it now that you see the other side of it." Was it right that you got promoted? And I was like, well, I was working hard. And he was like, yeah, but he went around the system to get you promoted and didn't think about the rest of the squadron at all when he did it and knew at that point you were right. And so, which is interesting because I was super, I was caught. I was caught in the whole, like, this dude promoted me. Like, I owe him a lot for that. Like, but re later realizing it was like, but the entire system was being manipulated and I benefited from it. So what yeah. I realized was I was like, man, this dude really didn't do a good thing in a, in a thing. Granted, I benefited from it. And I, and I was, I was on my way to that anyways, but so you, don't, you didn't think it was the right thing to do in hindsight. I learned that the process that's supposed to be in place was was bent because he had done what he had done. Yeah. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying I didn't, but I learned from myself to say, look, because here's here's a really hard thing. What we used to have to do, and this was tough, is we used to have to go into these boards, right? Like, so you've been up, I'm sure you've been up for Marine of the Year, whatever, Marine of the Quarter, or whatever they have. You go into those boards and you fight for your person. But what I learned later was is that if you if you know someone else is better in a different place, you need to stop your fighting, right? Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. You need to be that's able integrity, to integrity, right? That's yeah, absolutely. This wasn't that, but it was a lesson I was learning from. He ended up being what I thought was the right person. I was like, man, hold on, that was the wrong thing to do, and I learned it wasn't. And then everything else fell into place, right? I was older, and I was like, oh my god, look at all the extra stuff that he had. That wasn't that way, of course. Now, was he trying to do everything he could for his sailors? Absolutely, right good bad and others so it was the wrong person learning something and, the, and and i'm kind of proving your point with this and i knew it was but at the same time right it's it's if you don't know the lesson i didn't know that lesson until a lot later on and then learned it because up until that point i was like i was really conflicted like that's not the that of course it was the right thing to do he went to bat for his team because we always tell people that right go to bat for your team go to bat for your team go to bat for your team do anything for your team but sometimes you got to like do the, it's not the right thing to to make someone to do to go to bat for your team when they're, they don't deserve to get to well, go I was going to say do you do you rewrite that thought or have another angle at that say so you go to you always go to bat for the right thing yeah, I think it's lessons, right? Like yeah. we, we we talk about lessons and in, in, in wrong people. I you know, I again I just look at I we we were playing I was playing semantics with your quotes, so it's not I, I totally understood whatever it was, but it was just one of those pieces that I was like, you just don't understand when you're when you're not in that position and until you get to that position. And I've learned this over and over again. You just didn't learn. I had a really bad leader who would write to his mom and send him his evaluations when he's 40. And I was like, he's never married. He's just, and he was, but he was lonely. Like he was really lonely in leadership. And he, he couldn't handle the loneliness part of the leadership of being the only person. And he was trying to get us. So we were the closest rank that we were with him. And he was trying, but he was, he, he wasn't leading. He was trying to be a friend. Right. And I look back at it now. And he was one of the biggest influences me saying, I will never be like that guy. And now I look back on it and I, I did this. I even told Jimmy Haley, he was, he was my guest one time too. And I look back on the things that the decisions they were making. And I was like, that's not the right thing to do. And then I got into their shoes and I was like, okay, I understand why they acted the way that they were. And it wasn't necessarily a wrong person. It was, it was worrying about, it was, it was about a lesson that they were, that, that I could now look at and how they handled it versus being a person that was wrong. Right. I mean, we know wrong is 
when there's wrong stuff, that's very different than what we're doing. So I just looked at your quote as more a lessons versus a person type of a thing, because we just don't know when we're, when we get put in positions, you know? Well, I think that was the post that I, I, I did. There's some commentary and there might quote, be just talking some. about, um, no, well, in, in that one, I believe it was the one where I was talking about, like I was, um, delusionally trusting. I think I was talking about like there was delusional optimism, you know, uh, Mike Maltesta talks about in the, that in his book for entrepreneurs, like you're delusionally optimistic. You're not, you know, um, properly uh, analyzing risks and, and you know, at possible outcomes and things like that, which is totally true. But I was talking about how in, in my immaturity uh, to a point of thinking everyone's a good person, everyone's looking for the win-win, everyone's a good leader everyone's you know looking out for the team sure. um that's not true i've come across now to learn that um i have to be delusionally optimistic but not delusionally trusting that everyone is care like and you said it earlier like if you, people not everyone cares about your goals initiatives or whatever and sure. some people do and some and like absolutely you know, you've heard me say internally externally i'm a believer of finding the win-win right like what do you what, how are you trying to win what's winning look yeah. like to you cool this is what it looks like to me let's find a way to win together um i love those people and i want to live there and, and and have i ever been like after my win and not thinking about other people's you know wins not necessarily going for the win lose but necessarily like just going for the win not the win win if that makes sense yeah. but i've come across characters that are about win lose sure. they want to win and to hell with those rounds so your, yeah, your analogy that you mean. used earlier the guy that just runs over everyone just to get promoted that's a win lose character and and you know i've just come across that and and so now i've learned that you know, look, I, I feel like everyone's typically pretty good at heart, in heart, you know, and, and so are there bad characters, you know, and, and certainly there's people that make mistakes and make a habit of making mistakes and, and whatever it, it, there's, there's, there is our diversity in our humanity and values, but that, that, that all comes from how we, our impressions or whatever. But anyways, um, that whole post was about open your eyes up that there are wrong decisions and wrong people out there and we should be learning from them because you know we're going to see mistakes made that we absolutely haven't made before we don't want to make um you know so so that's what that's what the intent was there um and I, again we're i'm just playing semantics with you over it but it's the difference but i'm like you right i i think there's goodness in everybody i think when people apply for a job they actually want to do that job because it, it takes it takes a lot of effort at today's day and age to sometimes get a job fairly or unfairly, even though it's they're, they're wide open. But I think, again, I, I'll go back to when we were, we were on our 11 month deployment and we had the least amount of issues that I've ever seen disciplinary wise, because we were going out, we were doing the mission that we were all taught to do. And then we were having our break of just of relaxing when we, when we needed our breaks, right. When we took our port calls. So, but I've also been, when we were in Japan, where we were doing nothing except show of force, where you just ended up not really doing the stuff that you want. There was no end result to what you needed to do, right? It's it's kind of, if you remember Jarhead, I'm sure you do with Jake Gyllenhaal, he was like, I'm supposed to do this, and he never gets a chance, and that's so frustrating. And I think mm -hmm. that that breeds all this other stuff to do, and I think it, it you make wrong decisions because of it. But um, yeah, it's a good look. Again, um, so just for everybody knows, I absolutely agree with mostly almost everything Dale says, and it was you're supposed for, to for today's group. I'm supposed to. That's right. <laughs> no, yeah, man, it's it's all look. Uh, everything we're trying to do here is just to get people to think, you know, yeah, and hear different absolutely. perspectives and get better from it. So, uh, no, I love the challenge of the thoughts and, and kind of slice them up and all that. So it's all good stuff. Yeah, good. Well, good. Let's wrap this up. So listen. Um, this time for the lion's den next week for the flip side, I will be recording something. Um, so Dale and I would have Dale and I've been doing over the past couple months has been really focusing on pain points and business owners problems that they're having with leadership, with high performance. And we're really trying uh, in the very near future, actually just the end of the summer, um, we're going to be coming out with either a revised or a brand new, you've heard of my L4 series that I'm coming out with, which is lifetime learning for leaders. And um, we're really bringing that to the table on the forefront. So next week, one of the things that we plan on doing for everybody is to kind of 
give you access if you're a member as the memberships, uh, you'll, you'll see those come out a little bit later. But as you have access to those things and as you get more, you're going to start to see these things called that we're calling ready sheets. And I'm going to talk to you next week about my ready sheets. Um, I'll give you a little preview before they came out, before they came out, before they come out, excuse me, at the end of the summer, really just talk about kind of five things of my ready sheets that can be a simpleness thing. And then later on, when you have the ability to go download them, when you become a member, you can download those things and kind of see them um, of what they are. And they're, they're, they're a ready sheet for you, right? Call them a throw down deck, if you would, in, uh, in, when you're a business owner and you're trying to pitch something, they're kind of your throw down sheets, keep them in your pocket, keep them in your, in your desk and just, and read them, right? You read them and go, yeah, I remember this. This is something that's good for me to remember. So we're going to have those. I'm going to have that next week. Next week, we're not going to be live. I have a trip to go to. I'm very excited for my daughter. It's going to the national championships for goalkeeping down in Florida. So I will be there. So it will not be live next week. Um, and then the following week, though, we're super excited to finally for Dale and I to have Laura, Laura Colbert, our, my guest host on, or, or excuse me, my co-host on the first week on the streamcast. She will be on. We're going to actually finally talk about her book, Sirens, uh, How to Peace Standing Up, and really get to talk to her uh, from an author and from her uh, experience in Iraq, which is what she had. Um, we're going to get to talk to her in the last week for that. So we're super excited for all those two things for the rest of the month. Uh, and now I'll let my buddy here, you got anything you want to talk and add about? No, no, we're all, uh, heads down, working hard on, uh, helping, you know, business owners in a lot of ways, uh, like you said, around leadership, uh, performance and, and the like, you know, I know it's tough, been there, done that. And, uh, so we're putting together some great resources to help you persevere and, uh, reach your goals. And really the goal should be ultimately abundance and personal freedom. You know, what, what the bottom line says is one thing, but you know, how you feel about yourself, how your life's going, how your family feels, where they're going, all that matters. Yeah. I think we talk so, so much right now about, we talk so much about like, hey, I want this good work family balance and work family harmony and all this stuff that people are asking for. And I want all that. And you know what? I think that's something you and I have taken on and said, you know what? We can we can help people get to that, whether whether you're in the very beginning of that race or whether you're towards the middle or towards the end of that race. Um, I think for small, for business owners um, and, and, and actually, and for executives and people alike, we can, I, I definitely feel that uh, where we're going with this. It's all really applicable. Helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, all it's helpful for fatherhood, man. It helps me. So I use yeah. it I yeah. in their fatherhood stuff. So, which I'm sure we'll talk about it. Well, listen, thanks everybody. Uh, stayed on for 122. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. Thanks for the comments for today from everybody who was listening. Look forward to seeing you in two weeks live next week. Uh, we'll have the recording for you of the stuff, but everybody else have a great week and flip out. See you guys.